Hello everyone. In this video, we're gonna be looking at a few previous year questions from the NEET exam. We are mainly gonna be looking at the pathology questions. So let's start with the first question. Which of the following exocrine gland ducts is not blocked in cystic fibrosis? Is it pancreas, sweat glands, lungs, or none of the above? So let's try to understand what cystic fibrosis is. So take this as a representation of the cell membrane. Here we have a channel by the name of CFTR. CFTR is Cystic Fibrosis Transmembrane Conductance Regulator. This is responsible for the transport of many things including chloride, bicarbonate and water. So normally this channel works, these are transported through the channel and help in the formation of the mucus. But in this disease, the CFTR is not working. So due to this, let's see what will happen. The mucus will become acidic because bicarbonate is not able to go through. It will be chloride deficient and also very importantly, the mucus will become very thick because the water content will be low. So let's see the options one by one now. What will happen in the pancreas? Here the ducts will get plugged because of the thick mucus. This may lead to atrophy and fibrosis. In the respiratory system, here also the same thing. Because the secretions are very thick, it can cause secondary obstruction and infection. But in the sweat glands, this actually does not happen. Here something different happens. Here actually the sodium is not able to reabsorb from the secretions. So there is high sodium in the sweat gland secretions which leads to a condition called salty baby syndrome. For a detailed explanation, I've already made a video on cystic fibrosis so I highly recommend you go and check that out. So coming back to our question, the correct answer here is sweat glands. Okay, now next question. On physical examination, a 55 year old man is discovered to have hepatomegaly. He also complains about getting a dark tan despite limiting sun exposure. The patient most likely has Wilson's disease, hemochromatosis, autoimmune hepatitis or viral hepatitis. So there isn't a lot of information given in the question. But the two most important things that you have to look for is hepatomegaly and dark tan. Now in this question, limiting sun exposure means that the tan the person got is not because of the sun, it's probably because of some disease. So let's look at the options one by one. In Wilson's disease, what is this? So in this condition, there is excess of copper and dark skin color change is not typically seen here. Similarly, in autoimmune and viral hepatitis, the dark skin color is not seen. But in hemochromatosis, let's see what happens here. It is characterized by a triad where the pancreas are affected, the liver is affected and our answer the skin is also affected. The dark tanning is seen because of increased melanin production. In fact, because of the dark skin color and the pancreas being affected, we give this condition another name called bronze diabetes. Bronze because of the skin color and diabetes because the pancreas is affected and is not able to produce insulin, hence diabetes. I've also made videos on hemochromatosis as well as Wilson's disease where I've explained each and everything in detail. But for now coming back to our question, here the answer is hemochromatosis. Now next question, interleukin 1 is activated by caspase 1, 2, 8 or 9. So interleukin 1 is a fever inducing interleukin. The precursor or inactive form of interleukin 1 is converted to the active form with the help of caspase 1. I try to add references wherever I can, so I've added here too. If you want to go and look it up or read it in more detail, you can follow this. So coming to our question, here the correct answer is caspase 1. Now coming to our next question, the cause of flask shaped ulcers in the colon is due to Entamoeba histolytica, Giardia lamblia, Helicobacter pylori, or Entamoeba vermicularis. So the correct answer to this question is Entamoeba histolytica. Let's see a few other features of this and this is the correct way to attempt a question because in the upcoming exams they are not going to ask the exact same question. They will take the topic meaning Entamoeba histolytica and they will ask questions around this topic so you need to be very thorough with each and every option. So a fecal-oral transmission is seen here and here the cysts have four nuclei and a chitin wall which is resistant to the gastric acid and it is due to this reason that it can pass through the stomach. Now it affects the cecum and the ascending colon most often and in the question also you must have noticed that cecum was mentioned. And the answer, flask shaped ulcers with narrow neck and broad base are seen here. I've added the reference here also. So coming to our question, 
Entamoeba histolytica is the answer. Now, which of the following is an Alzheimer's disease risk factor? Is it APOE1, E2, E3 or E4? So APOE, what is it exactly? So it is a protein involved in the transport of cholesterol and other lipids in the blood. It also maintains the integrity of neuronal cells in the brain. Now there are three alleles that code for this protein. You have epsilon or E2, E3 and E4. And the answer to our question was E4 because this is the one that increases the risk of Alzheimer's disease and lowers the age of onset of the disease. So coming to our question, ApoE4 is the answer. Now alcoholism is significantly linked to the development of dilated cardiomyopathy, pericarditis, myocarditis or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So alcohol and its metabolites are actually very toxic on the heart muscle and it is due to this that they cause dilated cardiomyopathy. So coming to our question, dilated cardiomyopathy here is the answer. Now, Zellweger syndrome is caused by the absence of lysosomes, mitochondria, nucleus or peroxisomes. So what is Zellweger syndrome exactly? So it is also called as cerebrohepatorenal syndrome. It is caused due to mutations in the PEX genes and it is characterized by the deficiency of peroxisomes. So coming back, our answer is peroxisomes. Now which enzyme deficiency is linked to Menke's disease? Is it lysyl hydroxylase, methionine synthase, glutamyl aminopeptidase or lysyl oxidase? Now what is Menke's disease? So here there are mutations in the ATP7A gene and a copper deficiency is going to be seen here. Now the characteristic findings in this disease are very important. You will see kinky hair, growth failure and nervous system deterioration. Kinky hair is a very important key point that you should know. So the copper is required by lysyl oxidase and this is our answer. So let's see a little more about lysyl oxidase. So it helps in making the collagen stable by helping in the formation of cross links. So take this to be an example of collagen. And this formation of cross links and making it more stable is the function of lysyl oxidase. Anyways, coming to our question, here the answer is lysyl oxidase. Now, fish mouth appearance of the valve in rheumatic heart disease is caused by rupture of valve, hypertension, hypertrophy of ventricular wall or calcification and fibrosis. So the question is talking about rheumatic heart disease and I'll quote a direct line from Robin so that there is no confusion. Calcification and fibrosis bridging across the valvular commissures create fish mouth stenosis. So for example, comparing this image with this cute little fish, you can see that there is some kind of similarity. Coming back to our question, here our answer is calcification and fibrosis. Now the last question, all is true about Crohn's disease except transmural involvement, rectal sparing, perianal fistula or lead pipe appearance. Soon I will be making a detailed video on Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis but for now let's just try to solve this question. So transmural involvement, yes. Crohn's disease typically involves all the layers. Rectal sparing, yes, this is also seen. And there is a patchy involvement with skip lesions. So this is another very important point, mainly seen in the colon and ileum. Perianal fistula is also commonly seen, but the lead pipe appearance, no. This is typically associated with ulcerative colitis and not Crohn's disease. So in this image, you can see that the large intestine kind of looks like a lead pipe, which is why it is given that name. Coming back to our question, here our answer is lead pipe appearance. So that's it for this video. If you have any doubts, so please leave them in the comments. Or you can message me on Instagram anytime. The link to my Instagram is in the description. Thank you.